Okay, so before this video starts, if you guys have any specific questions about the bed liner paint job that you would like answered that I did not answer in this video, make sure to leave those in the comments below and I can do a separate video addressing specific questions that you guys have uh, about the bed liner. So, yeah. What is up guys, welcome back to another video on the channel here. Um, what we're gonna be doing today is the one gear update for the bed liner paint job. It has been, believe it or not, about a year since I have uh, had this bed liner paint job on the truck. I'm gonna give you guys, um, well, we're gonna address some of the concerns that I had when I originally did it and uh, tell you guys how it's holding up and stuff like that. So. Uh, if you want more information on the truck that it's on, this is my 96 F-150. If you have any more questions than that, I posted a video yesterday going over lift, tires, um, whatever else you guys could possibly want to know. Also, there's a whole bunch of videos of it on the channel if this is the first time you're watching. Um, yeah, so this product, is, it's not the Raptor liner. A lot of people think it's the Raptor liner. It's not. It's actually made by SEM. Uh, it's called the SEM Rocket Liner. It's a tintable bed liner, and get this right out of the way in the beginning. Um, when you buy this specific product to get it in a specific color, um, see, I bought mine from like a paint shop, right? So they 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 basically they, they supply paint to like auto body shops and stuff, and they carry this product in stock. So I told them that I wanted it in this specific color, so they tinted it to that color. I did not tint it, they tinted it, so you'd have to find a place that um, that can tint the bed liner, sells the bed liner, and, or you could bring it, to, bring it to a shop and see if they'll tint it for you if you just buy a regular tintable kit online. Um, some shops might tint it for you, but the place that I bought it from tinted it for me. So I sprayed this on myself. I'll tell you guys a little bit about how you actually do it uh, once we go over a couple other things. So, like I said, it's been on here for about a year now, and one of the things that I was kind of concerned about was, number one, was fading, so seeing if the color would be changing at all. Number two was if it was going to crack or not. So, if you guys originally had watched the video of, you know, when I had first put it on, um, this stuff is pretty thick. I don't have any kind of sample piece for you right now to show you actually how thick it is but it's, it's actually a pretty significantly thick material it's a lot thicker than paint you might be able to see right there on the edge it's kind of it's kind of thick uh, you can put it on thicker if you want this had about four or so coats put on it if i remember four really light coats um you really you want to start light and then build it up because uh, if you start going heavy on it you're not going to have this um, nice kind of even rough texture you're gonna end up with stuff like see if I can find a, a mess up in here this right here is just kind of runny right in this area but then you can see right here it's that kind of nice bed liner texture so yeah you really want to go light coats this is kind of a screw up right here um, it's not even really noticeable but that's really the only spot on the truck that that, that happened to um, so when it comes to cracking, I haven't noticed any cracking other than little bits around the, you know, where the seams, it makes the seams a little bit closer together because of how thick the material is. So um, I just kind of touched it up with some paint and really you don't even notice it unless you're really right up on it. Um, I haven't noticed any cracking down the sides or anything. Like even though these panels do tend to uh, wiggle a lot, it hasn't had any, any cracking or anything like that in it so in that department we are pretty good in the fading department um, so this part right here between the uh, you know between the cab and the bed this was all painted outside that part was the rest of this was painted in the paint booth um, so it's a little bit different of a consistency kind of you can spray it all outside um, but this is kind of a little bit different it's a little bit flatter than what was actually sprayed in the paint booth. Um, not as many bumps and stuff. But this was actually painted pretty much a little over a year ago now, and this was painted a little bit under a year ago now, so pretty much a year 
but when it comes to fading I haven't noticed absolutely anything the color is exactly the same as it was um, when I first put it on I can't exactly guarantee that with all products but you can see I have this little light right here on top and if I lift it up it's the exact same color underneath the light as it is not underneath the light so haven't had any fading at all that light that light's been on there the entire time so what would happen is if it was fading it'd be a darker color under the light so that's how I can uh, <clears throat> kind of judge that it hasn't been fading at all so that is good in the fading department it has held up very well now in around the wheel wells and stuff right one of my other concerns was that it was going to start you know not really sticking very well around the wheel wells and I can tell you right now that it looks pretty much exactly right right with this because basically you have a tape line right here all right so that you don't get stuff all inside um, on this tape line I was kind of worried that it wouldn't stick that great and it would start peeling up and I can safely say that I have not experienced any of that it is very firmly planted on there um, you just make sure that you that you also prep very well because this has been like this for a, for a while now uh, you can see some of it has came off right here um, we didn't really spray super heavy on the un, un, on the underside of this so when we took the tape off it kind of took some of it off because we didn't really go very heavy it's actually very thin right there but that's really the only spot that I've noticed that on um, it's really you know not that bad and it's also not noticeable because it's on the underside of the truck so around all of the seams and everything like that is holding up very well right where all the tape edges were it's holding up very well um, some areas are a little bit you know kind of messed up kind kind of kind of like here's another spot right here where you know probably rocks and stuff have been hitting it because it's thin right there uh, um, I don't expect that to really spread and if it does it's something that you could just tape this and just spray this again uh, by itself so it's really not a very big deal that actually um, yeah it's, it's really not a big deal that's just from rocks hitting it and stuff like that if I had the uh, chrome trim pre the, the chrome trim piece on here still then it wouldn't be doing that but it's actually holding up very well I don't think the other side has any of that issue with it uh, let's check and see uh, there's like a couple little tiny rock chips right there but nothing really nothing really major so it's holding up very well underneath there um, also there's no haven't had any rock chips from down the side which is some people they'll just paint the like a line like right about here so that to protect to uh, protect against rock chips and I'm really not a big fan of that look I decided to do the whole truck but um yeah, I haven't had any rock chips or anything like that, stuff like that. So, a <clears throat> couple of categories there, it's holding up very well. It hasn't been fading, hasn't been cracking. Some rock chips really where the where the rocks are really hitting hard. Um, except for, in the, it's only in the front though, in the back it's fine. So, it's probably, uh, probably just from inconsistency when spraying it on, to be honest with you. If, you, if I had gone thicker up in the front, it probably wouldn't be doing that. So one of the things, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I don't recommend doing a bed liner paint job in a light color like this. And the reason for that is because when you just try to go to wash this, all right, everything kind of gets stuck all in all the little bumps. And it's, it's actually very hard to get all the stuff out of the little bumps. Uh, I have videos on the channel showing you guys the severity of that at one point my hood was basically stained black in some areas and i had to scrub at it for about two days to get it all out and then it did kind of fade in some areas because of the the product that i was using to actually try to clean it um but inside all the little ridges and everything it does collect a lot of dirt especially on the hood right here on this piece and on the roof so if i were to do this again i would not do a light color it is just a whole hell of a lot easier to maintain if i had gone with black or like a blue or a darker blue anything but like orange yellow and white um would probably be a lot better red you'd probably be fine but just since this is such a bright orange color 
it, it really makes everything stand out um, when you have stuff hiding in the little bumps there. It's just a pain in the ass to get out. Um, what I've also done, you guys can stay tuned for this video when it comes out, but I have, um, a little while ago, I used this hydrocelic stuff about a week ago, and I ceramic coated the truck, um, hopefully to minimize that from happening, because basically what the ceramic coating does is it makes stuff harder for it to stick to the truck. Uh, I'll give you guys a long-term update on that when it comes around. Um, you know, once we have more time with it on there and I can give you guys my official, what I think about the ceramic coating, but I would recommend that if you're going to do a light color like this, you have to put a ceramic coating on it. You have to do something like that. This doesn't have a clear coat over it. Um, I really don't recommend putting a clear coat over it just because you'd, it's, it's not going to want to stick to the bed liner as it would with normal paint if you can you know, like wet sand the paint, clear coat it, stuff like that. This isn't, you don't want to sand this at all once it's on there because it's going to end up, it's just, it's just going to completely ruin the texture and it's going to, it's going to not look good. So don't sand this, no matter what you do, just spray it on, leave it and find something like that ceramic coating to help protect it. Um, don't clear coat it and don't do stuff like that. Just, just find something you can spray it on and to protect it. You also really can't wax this kind of a finish because of all the little bumps. Um, wax gets trapped in all the little bumps and normally on normal paint, you put the wax on, wait for it to haze up, you take the wax off and it all comes off. But with this, when it hazes up, you can't get it all out of all the little bumps and it basically turns your bed liner white in between all the little bumps and then you have to really wash it with a freaking toothbrush and get all that wax out of there. And then you're just wishing that you that you didn't do that in the first place. So you gotta find something that dries clear, like that ceramic coating stuff that I used. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the update on how it's been doing. It's been holding up very well, uh, a lot better than a lot of people actually thought that it would. Um, other than the whole cleaning it thing, where I wouldn't do a light color again if I was gonna do it again or I would have put the ceramic coating on it sooner. Again, like I said, I'll let you guys know how that, um, how it holds up over time, the ceramic coating on this, and if the black shit comes back. Basically what it is, I'm, I'm guessing that it's just road grime and stuff that's sitting on these surfaces for an extended period of time, um, because both times that that happened to me, the truck had been sitting for a while. So it had been sitting for multiple months or many weeks on end, uh, without being driven and without being washed. So just keep that in mind. It's something that you, you really don't want to let stuff sit on it. Um, I haven't had any real staining issues from anything else. Um, from gas that would pour out of my gas doors before, uh, you'd get stains in your, in your paint, in your clear coat, um, like your normal paint. It still does do that a little bit, so just make sure that you are not spilling any gas down the side of your truck and if you do you wipe it off immediately because it really makes it difficult because it gets in all the little bumps and everything and it's a pain in the ass so when it comes to maintenance it's it's kind of easier than paint and kind of not easier than paint you end up cleaning it more often to make it to keep it looking good but it's also a lot more durable than paint so you don't have to deal with scratches or fixing stuff like that so it has its ups and it has its downs, but yeah. So how you actually want to go about putting this on, uh, there's videos on my channel if you would like to go back and watch those of us actually spraying it, but you sand the entire truck, the entire Jeep, whatever you're doing in 80 grit sandpaper. All right, you got to sand it real good. And then you're just basically going to spray it on um, with the, the gun that it provides you. Though this, this kit, the, uh, the Sam, Sam Rocket Liner kit, it came with a uh, with an application nozzle in the kit, so uh, you just use that. And depending on what air pressure you 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 spray it at, is going to depend on how rough the texture is. So I believe we sprayed this somewhere between 40 and 60 psi um, to get this texture out of it. This was probably sprayed. I don't know not not quite as high because it's not as 
not as bumpy and this part was actually sprayed outside it's more it's more of a smooth te texture um, really you wouldn't even notice that if I didn't point it out but it's just worth pointing it out that if you want to get a real rough texture and this isn't even as rough as you can go you can bump it up to like even higher PSI's and uh, get an even rougher texture but if you go with a, a lower PSI you're gonna get a much smoother texture than if you went with a higher PSI um, that's basically how you put it on. There's plenty of other videos on YouTube if you want to watch somebody actually do it um, on my channel and on other people's channels. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how you put it on. It's really not that hard. Um, it's basically the same process as if you were to go to paint your truck or bedline your truck. Just it's, it, You don't need to spend quite as much time sanding um, as if you were to put paint on. You don't all the little imperfections like if you have little scratches in your paint and you just kind of sand them down rough them up you don't see them when you spray this on because obviously it's a pretty thick um pretty thick material that you're spraying on instead of just paint which if you have scratches in the paint sand it down spray it you're still going to see those scratches so with this it's kind of a plus for that when it comes to prepping your surface the other thing people ask me about a lot in the comments sections when it comes to the bedliner paint job is that i put these stickers on here, all right? Four by four stickers. Um, you can see actually that some of it has came off from rubbing up against trees and stuff right here. You can see some orange bleeding through. That's really not the sticker's fault. If you wanna see how I put these on, there's a video on my channel on how to apply these decals. Basically, you just use a heat gun, but um, these, have, these were put on about a year ago also, and they're still holding up pretty strong. Um, some stuff is kind of leaking in from the outside on the edges kind of turning it a little bit dirty on the outside edges but it's not anything that you really see unless you look very close this one actually kind of did get a little bit of water underneath it but then it evaporates out and it's still stuck on there pretty well so that's the update on the on the decals I know a lot of people ask me about that so alrighty so what we're gonna do next is if you guys have questions that you would like to leave in the comments below questions about bed liner paint jobs I can make a uh, separate video um, answering individual questions but this is just kind of the one year update on how I feel that it's doing and if I would do it again so I would probably do it again but not just in in a, in a darker color probably not as bright of an orange even though it's pretty cool it would be uh, a lot easier to maintain in the darker color so yeah that is the one year update uh, if you guys want to leave questions about specific things with it i can make another video and go over your specific questions um that's pretty much going to do it for today thank you guys all for watching make sure to leave a like if you have not already